This is a fancy math book. I really wish that they still made math books like this. I don't know if there would be a market for it. Maybe that's why they don't do it. Anyways, in this video, we're gonna take a look at this super fancy book. It is called Combinatorial Theory and was written by Marshall Hall Jr. And so why is this book so fancy? Well, first of all, you see that little ribbon sticking out? Let me show you that. This is, this is really cool. So it's got like a little, it's like a little string here, and you can use that as a as a as like a bookmark, right? And let's see where it, where it emanates from. It's it's like back in there, right? Very different. You don't you don't see that <laughs> in modern books, right? Look at that, just beautiful. Gin and Blaisdell. This publishing company always had very very nice books. I have several of their books. The yeah, additional Blaisdell books. Mm. Mm. I gotta smell this. I'm sorry, it's calling me. Oh, it smells nice. Let's take a look at this. Let's open it up. There's a signature there. And then let's look at that. Combinatorial theory. Really nice blue, blue cover. 1967, someone penciled it in. And I guess they did that in 1967, right? I mean, that's pretty amazing. Someone took their hand in 1967 and wrote that down. That was just so long ago. And here's, here's the copyright, 1967. This book is in really good condition. Combinatorial theory is the name now given to the subject formerly called combinatorial analysis or combinatorics, though these terms are still used by many people. So just changing the name. It's a combinatorics book. So it starts with permutations and combinations. You might have seen that before. Um, if you take stats in college, you'll see that. Inversion formulae, generating functions and recursions. You'll see these things in a discrete math class. Partitions. Thick pages, nice and thick. Distinct representatives. Ramsey's theorem. Some extremal problems. Convex spaces and linear programming. Graphical methods. Block designs. A lot of topics here, right? This is a little more advanced than um, other books. Yeah. Like, this has more combinatorics than a discrete math book would, for sure. And it's an entire book on it. And it looks like it's fairly simple. Like, it doesn't look... It's a nice, clean book, uh, but it does get harder, right? It starts with things you're probably familiar with. A permutation is an ordered selection of objects from a set S. A combination is an unordered selection of objects from a set S. Very good. I like how, I like how he starts right away with the actual definition, right? And that's important because I think a lot of times people don't really know what they're doing when they're using the formulas. So that's what a permutation is and that's what a combination is. And just right to the point. Yeah. We may or may not re uh, permit repetition. Yep. And then you've got right away, here's the formulas, boom. And he just proved it. <laughs> he just proved it right there. He just proves it, he just proves the formula. That's, I mean, he just does it right there. The number of permutations of n, thin, n things take an R at a time without repetition, written NPR, is easily evaluated. For, a, for in a permutation a sub 1 through a sub r, we may choose a sub 1 as any of the n objects, a sub 2 as any of the remaining n minus 1 objects. Having chosen a sub 1 through a sub i, we may take a sub i plus 1 as any one of the n minus i remaining objects. Hence, NPR, and then there you have it there, the product. And that's equal to that. Um, there's a step here you can do. You can basically, uh, you multiply by one in a clever way here to, to get this. And he's skipping that. Um, so there are some steps skipping, but most books skip it. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you're supposed to fill in the details like, hmm, how do you go from here to here? You just have to do a little bit of work. It's not too bad. Yeah. So as you can see, it gets right to it. So not... I mean, it's, it's to the point. It's to the point. Straight to the point. But a very fancy book. Right, very, very fancy. Let's look at the back, see if there's anything on the back. Oh, here we go. About the book. What's this say? Because of the recent emphasis on combinatorial theory, need has arisen for a systematic analysis of the discrete in mathematics and science. In answer to this need, the author treats individually topics such as permutations and combinations, the theory of partitions, 
finite geometries, and material relevant to design of experiment and linear programming. Cool. Oh, look, this volume is intended for advanced undergraduates and beginning graduate students who have had linear algebra on a course in probability. So, yeah, it makes sense. This is, um, I mean, in theory, I mean, we didn't need any of that at the beginning, right? So it's just you have to have a certain level of, of mathematical maturity, you know. You have to be able to pick up a math book and, you know, grind it out, sit there and read it and, and learn. Uh, most people, when they're learning combinatorics, they learn it in, like, a discrete math class. So um, I actually have a book right here. Let me just show you. So this one here is, like, a thousand times easier, but it's not fancy. <laughs> so, But you can still use it. It's called Discrete Mathematics with Applications, and this is the one by App. So this one, I think, is... This is probably the easiest book you can use to learn this stuff. In fact, uh, it's a fancy book, which is cool, and I'll leave a link in the description. But let's let's take a look at the F book really quick. And why not? So this is probably the easiest uh, beginner book that you can get for discrete math. Okay, and it's widely available. It's not super cheap, and I'll leave a link. So it starts with logic, uh, the logic of compound statements. I've read a lot of this. The logic of quantified statements. It's very clean, I think, compared to the other presentations I've seen. This is, like, the, the best explained. Also, people have left comments about how they like this book. Elementary number theory and methods of proof. Sequences and mathematical induction. So this has other stuff. And then look, counting. So here's the combinatorics, you see. And we've got some function stuff here. So this is the book a, a computer science major would use in a class like discrete math or in a class like combinatorics and graph theory because it does have yeah, it does have graphs and it's got some counting so you could probably do a, co a combo course that covers both. And then you have solutions and hints to selected exercises. But as you can see, our fancy book has way more hardcore stuff, but it has a lot more prereqs, right? You saw the prereqs here, um, the prereqs. What, what was the recommendation? It was linear algebra and a course in probability, which again, um, I mean, yeah, that's what he's saying, but I, I think you can get away with less. It's really about just having some math. And honestly, yeah, it's, it's a tough one. This, typically in colleges, the prereq is like Calc 2. And I think they do that mainly because they want to make sure you've had some serious math, right? Because this has a lot of topics. So it's not just like logic and counting. There's other things in here like a graph theory, functions, do some proofs. You learn how to write proofs with books like these. So this book will teach you how to write proofs, right? Whereas with this book, you're expected to already know how to write proofs. So that, that's the difference, I think, right? And that's a key difference that needs to be said. So way better for beginners, and I'll, and I'll leave a link in the description. But yeah, I wanted to show you my fancy book and another really good book for beginners. If you want to learn math, check out my courses. They are new to me, but if you get them, please use the links from the description of this video or from my website, mathsorcerer.com. As always, keep doing math.